And this week we are talking about all about Eve. This movie was released in 1950. Uh, IMDb synopsis uh, for the film is seemingly timid but secretly ruthless. Eve Harrington uh, insinuates herself into the lives of aging Broadway star Margot Channing and her circle of theater friends in an Oscar winning story. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, this movie stars um, Bette Davis, Ann Baxter, and um, Celeste Holm as the three main characters, um, I would say, in this, um, with uh, three counterparts. Um, the, the men at their sides in the movie are uh, George Sanders, Gary Merrill, and Hugh Marlowe. Um, Bette Davis. Uh, so the movie starts out with um, at an award ceremony with a um, character talking over this. It's a, there's a lot of um, a lot of people s- telling this from their points of view in different parts of the movie, and different people kind of take that role. Um, it starts with, I believe it was Celeste or the, char- the character of Karen in this. Um, and if I remember correctly, um, she is whoever it is. They are talking about um, the theater in general, and you very quickly realize that Eve is getting a um, an award, a oh, so relatively prestigious award in this in the in the in the theater. Um, before she's actually given the award. The whole movie cuts to a flashback, starting with how Eve is discovered by Karen in the first place. Um, she's not really discovered by Karen. She's standing outside of the theater and wants to talk to the um, the main character in the play, which is Bette Davis, played by Margot. Ann Baxter plays Eve. Um, so Ann goes in to meet Bette Davis. She kind of befriends her and kind of becomes like her... Um, right hand woman um this whole time Margot is trying to deal with the fact that she's getting older uh she talks about it in the movie several times how she's old she just turned 40 she's playing 20 year olds um she doesn't like this um she thinks that everybody's out to get her basically and out to leave her and trade her in for a younger model um and that's where Eve kind of comes in. Eve is is a twenty something year old kind of bright eyed, bushy tailed, um, uh, innocent, seemingly innocent girl in this. And it kind of the the movie kind of rolls along, and you see Margot be kind of mean to everybody and mean to Eve. And then um, Eve kind of starts. She doesn't she doesn't ever really be mean at the beginning. She kind of starts trying to manipulate people to do what she wants. She ends up, um, you know, almost, they talk about how she's like almost studying Margot to be just like her. And she kind of goes through and she, um, uh, takes, she ends up getting to the point where she becomes Margot's understudy. And then, um, she ends up playing the role, uh, one of the, one of Margot's roles in a, in an evening, even though, they point out very promptly in the movie that Margot never misses a, a night. She never misses a show. She could, they say if she could roll onto the stage, she's going to play the play in her role. Something happens that is kind of a joke, supposed to be a joke that is set up by Margot's friends. Um, Eve ends up playing the role. A bunch of writers are there and it becomes this big ordeal that Eve did such a great job and all the writers talk about her and everything else and Margot sees this as another reason that she's being left behind and um, Eve kind of takes uh, takes this and tries to spin it and she's 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 trying to manipulate everybody she ends up um, 
secluding herself, everybody else kind of doesn't like her after a, one of these articles comes out talking about how great she is, basically. And she ends up manipulating herself, her way into a role that was supposed to be played by Margot. Margot ends up not wanting it in the long run, but Eve ends up kind of getting it by... Um, basically blackmailing people. Um, after this, you learn more about Eve, that she is, she's, her whole backstory is a fake. She's been lying this entire time to try to become, um, try to get into the theater. Um, and then she gets blackmailed, basically, into, um, being quiet and, and staying with this, um, this writer, uh, newspaper writer who, who made her big, who put her, put her in a newspaper, um, played her up as a, as a main character in this, in these plays. Um, and then at the end you see Eve, um, after this whole thing happens, you jump forward several years where she is getting the award and then you see the start of, uh, she goes home after getting the award, and you see the start of another girl being like her. Uh, um, a girl is waiting for her, tries to befriend her, starts to do things for her, and starts to kind of manipulate her way into being just, basically almost doing what Eve did to Margot, doing the same thing to Eve. So it's an interesting kind of backstabby, um, drama. I saw somewhere that it was listed as a comedy. I, I don't, I mean, there's some, I guess, kind of funny-ish parts, but I wouldn't, I don't know that I'd consider it a comedy. Um, it was, um, it's a little slow. Um, it's, it, it's a little over two hours long, and it kind of, there's a couple of points where it kind of drags until you get to where you start to see the, the backstabbiness come in, um, which isn't until closer to the end of the movie. Um, it is, uh, I think it's, I'm trying to think if it's, if it's worth, if I think it's worth a watch. Um, if you like, um, Drama, I'm going to say it's worth a watch. If you're looking for something funny or classic, I I probably wouldn't go with it. You know, if you just want to see the classics, which is part of the reason that I'm doing this whole thing, is um, to, to, to see these movies um, and, and see what people or what, you know, critics or whatever have considered the best movies of all time. That's kind of why I'm doing it. Um then I would suggest it. It's, it's not, the acting is a little over the top because it's a movie from the fifties, but it's, um, it's not terrible. It's just a little slow at times. Um, I did see myself checking the time a couple times to see where we were at and how much longer I had left in it. But once we got closer to the end, it was a little bit easier to get through when, like I said, it kind of picks up pace a little bit. Um, this is rated 8.2 on IMDb and a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, uh, something interesting I found in this, two couple interesting things. So one, I was watching it, and all of a sudden this, this blonde comes into the um, picture. And I'm looking at her and listening to her and trying to figure out who it was. And a, a couple, few, uh, maybe a minute after seeing her on screen, I'm like, that looks like Marilyn Monroe. Turns out it is. It's one of her earliest roles that she ever played in. Um, she's only in the movie for maybe like five minutes. She's very, very limited um, in as a character, um, but Marilyn Monroe's in this, so that that was interesting. I thought um, I wasn't expecting to see her in it. Um, also, another thing that I found that was interesting was a um, Margot's character, Bette Davis, and Gary Merrill, who plays Bill Sampson in this. In the movie, they are um, 
they're lovers. They're they're together. Um, they're at the end, towards the end, they get engaged. Um, she's worried the whole time before this about him leaving her for a younger person. He's the director of all these uh, plays that she's in in a theater. He he directs them. He's also uh, he goes to Hollywood and ends up directing a movie there as well. But the two in the in real life actually fell in love um, during the movie shoot. And two weeks, or sorry, um, they got married just a few weeks after they finished filming the movie and adopted a baby girl who they named Margot, which is her character's name. So that's kind of fun. Um, it is a... Wow, okay. It says they married in July of 1950. This movie came out in 1950, so that's, man, that's uh, October of 1950. They used to do quick turnarounds back then. Dang. Because nowadays it would take them, what, six months? year to make a, put out a movie after finishing it? Seems like. Yeah, that's, that's a really quick turnaround. Anyway, um, again, it's, it's an okay movie. If you're not big into dramas, it's, it's marked as a comedy on Google. I, I wouldn't consider it that. If you're not into dramas, probably not for you, unless you're just looking to, kind of doing like I am, and just watching these to see the, the, what is considered the classics. Um, that is, I think about it for this week. Um, next week we're going to watch Double Indemnity from 1944. I don't know if I pronounced that right. In indemnity? That's a hard word. Indemnity. Double Indemnity from 1944. So we're getting older. Older movie. Um, but yeah, we're going to do that. So, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. I would say do a shout out, but that's the other podcast. And, uh, I will talk to you guys next week. Thank <music> you.